Hey, what's up guys? Jeremiah here. Today I wanted to show you a little bit of how I edit some of my videos for YouTube or just my drone videos in general. And basically, this is going to be for those of you who are looking for an easy way to edit on the go without using your laptop. And the way I do that is editing on my iPhone 5 SE or my iPad Pro 10.5 inch. Now this is what I normally use to edit on. It's kind of hard to see when you're editing on an iPhone and just keep in mind guys that you need enough memory on your i device if you're going to edit like this for your footage and also to render your video at the end. Now once you get your video rendered you can delete your uh, original footage if you want to free up some space but I have a 256 gigabyte iPad which I'm always out of space on I'm always deleting stuff just to make new videos but I do a lot and have a lot on there now the app that I use on this to edit my videos is called LumaFusion and I've done a lot of research and a lot of trial and error and I found this to be the best app for me and what's nice about it is you could do three lines of video and you can also do three tracks of audio so you can add voiceovers um, you could do uh, music tracks and basically all different kinds of things with the app now it is limited a little bit to you know it's not as good as Final Cut and stuff like that obviously but for basically being a, uh, an app to use on your phone or on the go it's definitely well worth the $20 and I definitely got my money worth considering that you pay you know hundreds of dollars for like Adobe Premiere or Final Cut for 20 bucks I mean I'm telling you guys it's definitely worth the money so if you're interested stay tuned I'm gonna show you a little bit it's not gonna be a full-blown tutorial but it's gonna show you a little bit of one of my drone videos that I was editing um, actually this video I'm making here now the first thing you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to go up and get your footage either with your DSLR or your drone or whatnot then you're going to want to use one of these card readers here. It's a lightning to SD card reader and you just plug your card into there, plug it in your iPad and I'll put a link right here to a video I made that shows exactly how I do this and once you get your footage on your iPad you're going to want to go ahead drag the folders and the files you want to use, put them in a separate uh, folder and that's going to be easier to find in the editing app. So you want to go ahead and open up your app Luma Touch, which is actually Luma Fusion. Then you want to go up here, create a new project, and name it. And I'm going to name this how I edit my Spark Drone videos on iPhone or iPad. Then you select your frame rate, aspect ratio, and it creates your new project. Then you want to go up into your albums and select that folder that you um, put all your videos in. And this is where it makes it easier if you put it into a separate folder, but you don't have to. So you want to use these two buttons to find your starting point and your ending point of the first clip that you want to use. And you can use the whole clip if you want. You just drag the whole thing down into your timeline. But I'm only going to use uh, part of this clip. So there's my end. I'm going to drag it down into the timeline. And there's the first part of the clip that I'm going to use. It's 14 seconds long. And so now I'm going to go to my second clip and I'm going to select my starting and ending point for that as well. And then I'm going to drag it down on top of the last clip that I put there. And that's basically going to be my second row of video. So anytime it gets to that, it will play that instead of the video underneath it. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. So what I did was I recorded two different seasons here. Okay, now see how it's on top of the other clip. So when it gets to that point, it's going to play that one. Now, my two different seasons here, I recorded one in the winter and one in the summer with the leaves. And I'm going to try to get it to transition so it looks like it just changes. So basically what I'm doing now is I uh, adjusted the, the top clip a little bit, the size of it, so that it lined up perfectly and uh, it's, this is really hard to do when you're filming months in between. You're trying to get the clips to match, but I'm gonna try to make it as close as I can. Uh, obviously, it's not gonna be perfect, but uh, it, it should be close. So there's my first, first clip, and that looks pretty good. You'll see I drug the first clip out a few more seconds. Now this is going to be the second part of the clip that I'm using. It's uh, me flying towards this farm with no leaves on the trees. And uh, this is also winter time. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that down in there onto the first 
line of my timeline, my main, main line. And then this is the second part of the clip in the summertime with all the leaves. And again, I'm going to try to find the same spot in the video where I was at with the first clip, make that my beginning. And I want to cut it right there, right before the drone moves. I'm recording this with the spark and uh, it, it gets a little shaky there. So I cut that part out and I'm going to drag that right down on top of the other clip as well. And then I'm going to go ahead, open that up and adjust the size of that as well and try to adjust it to kind of line up uh, right now I'm lowering the opacity so that I could see the the video underneath it to try to line it up and I'm gonna line the field up and try to line the horizon up as close as I can um, you could adjust your tilt here your rotation pretty much everything the size so I'm just gonna try to get it close and then when I go back here you can see that that's fairly close um, it's still a little bit off but like I said guys this is really hard to do trying to keep your your drone in the exact spot that you had it you know five months prior or so so I adjusted it a little more and that's pretty close there all right so I think that looks pretty good put a transition in here and you could change these transitions here you can see you got cross dissolve dip all different things um, that's I think that one's the flash so probably keep it on flash there make it a little longer of a flash all right so uh, now I'm gonna go in here and adjust my color levels a little bit my brightness that way it just matches a little bit they call this color grading um, it's gonna change the you know the brightness the color contrast whatnot just to try to get it to match up a little bit better so it's not so much of a difference between the two uh, but obviously it's still going to be a pretty big difference because winter time everything was brown summertime everything's green So adjust my saturation a little bit uh, But you guys can see here You know what all you can adjust uh, You could do a lot of different things your highlights shadows all that right in the app. So uh, that's pretty nice now, this is another clip that I'm going to use here and uh Basically, I'm going to show you guys here in a minute how you can incorporate photos into your into your timeline and do some motion on the photos as well. I'm going to go ahead and drag that down into my timeline. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and pick a photo. You can see there's the size of the photos there. Um, going to drag it down there put it in the timeline now usually when you use a photo you got to go in and resize it um, you can go in and make it full screen or you can use the same size of the photo uh, uh, same size of, of uh, just leave it the same size but you usually end up with bars on the side but so now this is the photo that I'm going to use and <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead in and adjust my size and position and I'm going to use keyframes to make the photo move uh, as the video moves. So I'm just going to put some keyframes, adjust the size, adjust uh, where it's at, and you'll see here when I play the video that it'll move in just kind of like almost like the drone's flying towards it. And this actually turns out really nice, guys. The quality, usually when you use a photo in the video, I mean, the quality is just amazing. And at the end I'll play uh, at the very end I'll play the final uh, video the little video that I made here at the end so you guys can see the actual quality of it and again this is shot with the DJI spark and the videos were also or the photos were also taken with the DJI spark as well so I'm just adjusting these a little bit um, Let's see what else you can see here uh, I have this uh, zoomed in so I'm gonna go ahead and play with my colors a little bit on here uh, try to adjust them to my liking and there's different there's a lot of different um, preset settings you can do unsharp sharp uh, blur I mean there's there's a lot of different things you can do in here and you can also adjust those as well too so I'm gonna go ahead throw a transition in here 
and I believe this one's called the burst yeah burst transition all right now I'll drag another photo down into the timeline and you'll you see how the bars are on the sides there so you want to go into fit mode and click full screen and then it'll adjust it it'll zoom it in a little bit just to uh, fill the whole screen and then I'm actually going to zoom in a little further and do the same thing with some keyframes here put a keyframe let it move a little bit and then put another keyframe just so it looks like it's actually moving and that's what it's going to look like then I'm going to go adjust the colors a little bit throw a transition in there at the end and then here I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put in my ending this is this is what I usually do to the ending of every one of my videos it, so I already have some things saved here this is my please subscribe thing here uh, and if you guys haven't done so go ahead and subscribe especially if you're thinking about getting a spark or already have one Got a lot of good tutorials and I also got a set of goggles coming that I'm going to try with my Spark and then when I upgrade to the new Mavic 2 Pro uh, then I'll be doing some tests with that as well. And then here's the other transition that I got that shows you what to watch next and I have I made those previously and have those saved under my favorites so that I don't have to create those every time. And another thing that's nice guys is you can start your project on here and you could render your project and airdrop it directly to your iPhone and then you can continue off using your iPhone if you wanted to or another iDevice device as long as you have the app on that other device as well okay now what I'm gonna do is drag some music down in here for my ending and this is directly from the YouTube music library it's free music and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut that at the end there so that it just plays during my ending and you can go up in here and you could fade it out at the end by putting two keyframes and then adjusting your volume down that way it fades out nice at the end All right, so now what I'm going to do is go back to the beginning and put in a title. And then this is where I'm going to put my name down in the lower left-hand corner. And I have a favorites saved for that that I already have created. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And then once I get that there, I'm going to go ahead and drag it out to the end of my video. And then I'm going to put a transition right at the end so that it fades out. So that it does a cross dissolve and just fades out. Then you go into select your des destination to save it. You can save it to your photos, um, many different places, uh, directly to YouTube. I usually save all my videos in 1440p, no matter what I'm recording in. I'm usually recording in either 1080p or uh, 4K. But you could save in 4K as well if you wanted to. I'm going to select 30 frames per second because that's what I recorded in and video quality you can go from smallest all the way up to 50 megabits per second I usually select either economy or standard and you really can't tell too much of a difference as long as you're not going to zoom way in and and do any more editing then um, economy is okay uh, you're going to use up your memory really fast if you go with the highest 50 megabits per second but I usually select like I said economy 12 or standard which is about 24 and if you guys are using the new drones the new Mavic 2's you I mean they recorded 100 megabits per second so that's going to take up the memory fast and you could say I usually save in Havoc H265 which is going to create a smaller file size but it plays really well on my iPad and that's what I usually upload to YouTube in because it seems like you get better video quality however if you guys are going to 
save these videos to your laptop later on or export them to another device and play them then you might not want to use the Hevic H.265 format because I've noticed um, problems on my laptop trying to play the videos so sometimes I'll render another video in standard H.264 mode if I know I'm going to export it to my laptop and watch it on there that way it plays a little smoother and if you guys haven't already done so please subscribe please share this video with anybody that you find that it might be interesting to or help someone else out and let me know what you guys think in the comments below about the video please watch till the end here so you can see the little clip I made let me know what you guys think and also let me know what you guys edit with and if you guys have any questions below in the comments I'd appreciate it thanks for watching guys and I will see you around on the next one